The first fact I think anyone has to take account of is that there are two major forms of sleep, REM and non-REM, so rapid eye movement sleep and non-rapid eye movement sleep. Now, non-rapid eye movement sleep is what most people think of when they think of sleep. You're recumbent, you're, most animals lie down, there's very little brain activity, brain activity is synchronized, so there's probably not a lot of cognitive processing going on. There's not a lot of communication between centers. I think the best theories of non-REM sleep suggest that a lot of immune repair functions are happening and energetic functions. So it seems uh, on the surface that what does sleep have to do with getting a cold, but it does because sleep helps the immune system uh, uh, revitalize itself. Right, and in the brain system to revitalize itself as well. Glucose energy stores are being replenished. All kinds of housekeeping functions are taken care of during a slow wave sleep especially. REM sleep is a totally different uh, ball of wax. REM sleep seems to dissipate energy. It's, there's no energy being replenished. There is a lot of brain activity. The brain is desynchronized rather than synchronized. That's when we have the most vivid dreams. So there's a lot of cognitive processing going on in REM sleep. So if you want to look at sleep and learn something about consciousness, you'll look at REM sleep first. What about some of the, uh, the theories that sleep has to do with memory consolidation, creativity, problem solving? How do we deal with all these elements? There's pretty good evidence now that uh, both forms of sleep impact memory, but in very complex ways. And uh, you can't say that the function of either REM or non-REM sleep is memory processing because a hell of a lot of memory processing goes on during the day when you're awake. Sure. So you don't need sleep for, for memory consolidation. We don't think, but it is implicated. You get better memory consolidation, more sophisticated memory consolidation during both forms of sleep. But there are people who have been on drugs that suppress one or other forms of sleep, like particularly REM sleep, like many of the antidepressant drugs suppress various components of REM sleep. And, and those components have been suppressed in these people for years, and they, they have perfectly normal memories. So, okay. How about uh, claims of uh, enhanced creativity or problem solving? Is that uh, anecdotal? old wives' tales, as they say? No, I don't think so. I think there's, there's experimental evidence for it. Preliminary evidence suggests, yeah, more disparate connections are made, particularly during REM sleep, than during waking consciousness. So, but that may be for only certain types of people. You know, we just don't know enough yet. But it's fair to say that REM sleep in particular probably is crucial for creativity, though we don't know why, we don't know how. Well, certainly we have bizarre dreams. I mean, that's the Dreams are creative. Dreams. dreams themselves are creative. Right. They right. take some basic elements, they recombine them in very unusual ways. Right. And you get a whole different counterfactual picture of the world right. from your dream. It, it, most of the time it seems absurd and bizarre. And I wouldn't say so. I think the, the ones that we remember tend to be bizarre because oh. they're memorable. Okay. But the vast majority of REM dreams, when you just wake people up and you ask them, what, what, what were you dreaming? They're very creative and not as bizarre. Okay, well, that's interesting because I'm speaking because of the dreams that I remember, which are the Tends bizarre ones. to be ones. bizarre, yeah. Okay, what you're saying is that if you put me in your lab and you mm -hmm. woke me up at, at when I had REM sleep and you asked me in a, in a, in a statistically valid basis every mm -hmm. time, you'd get a different set of, Very uh, different. of dreams. So to, tell me about it. Very that. different. The bizarre elements are much lower in, in those kinds of dreams. We can analyze thousands of dream reports and we can very precisely characterize bizarre elements, when they occur, where they occur, what kinds of people. And it's not, I wouldn't say it's a real consistent char characteristic of dreams. I mean, let's throw that out. And bizarre, bizarreness does not really characterize okay. dreams. So, so therefore, how, what do we conclude? That if most dreams are more normal, shall we say, even though we may not remember them, what's the point? Well, if we knew the function of dreams, I'd be able to tell you. <laughs> but uh, certainly it has something to do with creativity, right? Because they really do present these counterfactual scenarios to your daytime existence. You know, they present a different picture of who you are, what you're doing, where you're going. And to that extent, they have to impact consciousness. Your awareness of yourself will be impacted by those counterfactual scenarios that get presented every, every 90 minutes during the night.